In this movie, we'll take a look at constraints. Revit offers many opportunities for us to apply constraints to our model, and constraints build in your design intent and are maintained throughout the life of the model. So as changes are made, those constraints will continue to be applied in real time. I like to think of it as adding smarts to your model. So let's look at some examples. I'm going to zoom in region in this break room area right here. So for the first example, maybe I want to take this door and set its distance at some distance off of this column and keep that maintained. So to do that, I'm going to start by selecting the door and notice the temporary dimensions that appear. I'm going to grab the witness line of the dimension on the right hand side and start to drag it. And then I want it to be associated with the column, not the wall. So I'll highlight the face of the column and then let go. When I do that, now the temporary dimension is now associated with that column. Now temporary dimensions are temporary. So what that means is if you click an empty space, it goes away. It will remember in this work session that I moved it to the column, but if you close the file and reopen it, it will forget and you'd have to do that again. So in order to keep it from forgetting that relationship, Right below the temporary dimension, there's a small little icon that says, make this temporary dimension permanent. And if I click this, it will turn that into a permanent dimension. So if I deselect the door, notice that the dimension remains on screen. This is now a permanent dimension. So what I'm going to do is select the door, highlight that value to activate it, change it to two feet, which is the distance that I want to actually lock in, deselect then select the dimension and notice right beneath it, there's this small little padlock icon. If I close the padlock, I've now created a constraint. So the distance of this door is now locked in at two feet away from this column. Now, the only way you can move the column is to actually move the grid because the column is associated with the grid. So if I just take this grid and I move it over a little bit, notice that it will move the door with it. So I'm going to undo that to put it back again. Now in the office right next door, we have a window which is off center. So maybe I want to center that window in the room. Now there's a variety of ways that we could do that, but there's a real easy way to do that with dimensions. So this time, instead of starting with a temporary dimension and making it permanent, I'll just draw the dimension myself. So we can go right to the permanent dimension command. Now I could get there on the annotate tab, choosing the align dimension tool, and there's a shortcut for it up here on the quick access toolbar. And of course, the keyboard shortcut is just DI. Now, let's say I wanted to go from the center of this wall to the center of this wall and the center of this window. Well, to get to the center of the walls, you just highlight one of the edges of the walls here and press tab, then click, highlight the edge of this wall, press tab, and then click. That gives me the two center lines of the two walls. And then I'll highlight the center of this window. Notice it highlights as well. And I'll just put the dimension up here. Now, with that dimension still selected, you can see that floating above it is a little EQ with a line through it. If I just click that, it will turn on the equality for this dimension and it will move the window into the center of the room. I'll click the modify tool to cancel and now let's test that out. To test it out, you just need to move one of the two walls that's participating in this equality. So I'll just drag this wall over slightly like so and notice that the window is staying centered in the room. Now, if I zoom out slightly and find another window here, maybe it's desirable to have this window also lined up in this relationship. Well, we can actually nest our relationship. So here we have an equal equal. And now what I'm going to do is go to my align command. I'm going to highlight the center of this existing window, and that's going to be my alignment reference. So the way the align command works is you start with a reference object, and then you pick another object that you want to move into alignment this window here at its center. And you see how it moves right over and now they're perfectly lined up. Well, notice the padlock again. And if I close it, I've now locked in that relationship. So if I cancel the command with the modify tool, grab this wall and move it back over just a little bit, notice that the window stays centered and it takes this window along for the ride. So we've kind of created this nested relationship. Now, equal equal is not limited to just a single object. Here we're centering just one window. If you want, I'm going to pan over here to this other part of the plan, zoom out slightly. I've got four offices over here on the left. And if I want all of those offices to be equal, I can use the dimension with equality to equalize the spacing of all those offices as well. So I'm going to go back to my align dimension. 
And once again, it's trying to highlight the faces of the walls, which might not be the most convenient spot. And I could use my tab key, but actually right here on the options bar, you have a small drop down where you can choose your preferred reference point. And here we actually get some options that tab wouldn't give us, like the centers or the faces of the core. And in this case, the center of the core is going to be the best choice because the center of the core of this wall, this wall, this wall, and this wall matches where it is on this exterior wall. So in other words, the exterior wall, the core is closer to the inside but it's got this brick veneer on the outside. And I don't want to consider the brick veneer when I'm equalizing my offices. So I'm going to place this dimension off outside of the plan and again, click the equality to equalize the spacing of all those offices. So once again, if you were to move one of these walls, and I'm just going to move it very slightly, you'll see that all of the other walls are adjusting. Now, Sometimes it will generate an error. In this case, I've got an error about a tag here. I'm just simply going to cancel that to avoid that error. Okay, but you can see that the equality is working. Now, another thing that you can do with the equality dimensions is you can change, instead of displaying equal, equal, equal here, you can change it to display the actual values instead. So if you want to see the dimensional value there, you certainly can do that. Now, notice I have these dimensions here measuring where the door jams occur. So another kind of constraint that we can apply is something called a global parameter. So I'm going to select this dimension down at the bottom and it's currently set to six inch. And up here on the ribbon, I've got a small icon right here where I can create a new parameter. And I'm going to call that typical door jam and click OK. Now that sets another kind of a parameter here. And now what I'm going to do is select each of these dimensions that are not connected to that first one. And because I've already set up the typical door jam parameter, I can now apply it to other dimensions using this label drop down. And you'll see that all of those doors will now adjust to match that new setting. And what's really nice about this is anytime I could click the small little pencil and I can change that value. So if I went to eight inches and I click apply, you're going to see all of the doors shift because they're all using that same global parameter. Furthermore, if you were to move one of these walls because of the nested relationship of the equality dimension, notice that all the walls move and all the typical jams are maintained. Now I'm getting an error here about the exterior wall because it's caused a connection problem right here. So let's just go ahead and cancel that. But you kind of see the idea that you can build these relationships and not only build them one off, but actually nest them together. Now, throughout the course of working in the project, occasionally someone will delete one of these dimensions. When that happens, you'll get another kind of warning that will ask you if you want to unconstrain as well or if you simply want to lose the dimension. If you click OK, it keeps the equality, but it deleted the dimension. Now, that's potentially troublesome because the person that comes after you working in this view may not know that that dimension exists, may not know that that equality is established. So what we can do is on the view control bar, we have a mode called reveal constraints. And the icon on the far right here is the one that I want to click, and that's called Reveal Constraints. And you can see this red border goes around the screen. And this shows me in the current view where all of the constraints are applied. And notice that the equality dimension reappears, even though I deleted the dimension. And if you look over here on the right side of the plan, there was a second alignment that was invisible as well. Not only that, there was a small one foot lock dimension right here. Now, if you decide you want to remove one of these constraints, you can do it directly in this reveal mode. The way you do that is to either delete that dimension that appeared there or just simply open the padlock. And either one will actually remove that constraint. When you turn off the reveal constraint mode, it'll hide all the constraints again and any that you've removed are no longer applied. So constraints allow you a lot of different ways to build your design intent directly into the model. Whether you're locking a dimension or using a global parameter or using equality, these all give you the opportunity to say, I want to maintain this relationship as the project progresses.